All right, what's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR again. So in this video, I'm going to talk about The Last of Us Factions 2 standalone multiplayer. And of course we don't have an official title, so we just refer to it as Factions 2. I'm gonna talk about the pricing model specifically. And even though, you know, nothing has been confirmed yet, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about it now. You know, we really don't have much information about this standalone multiplayer aside from uh, Naughty Dog is currently hiring uh, for it. And it is a standalone multiplayer. So I'm going to talk about uh, what it should be, what I think it should be, what I think it will be, and what it absolutely shouldn't be. Okay, so first of all, let's start out with what it should be, right? Now, given the fact that at least initially, this multiplayer was supposed to launch with the single player component of the game, it would be nice, it would be a good gesture if Sony did this. Once again, this is not what I think they will do based on, you know, Sony's history and PlayStation's precedents that they've already set as far as pricing goes, but I'm saying this would be nice but it ain't going to happen. So what I think it should be. So I think if you purchased or owned The Last of Us Part 2, then the multiplayer with whatever algorithm or program they use to detect it on your console, if you purchased or owned The Last of Us Part 2, then it would be nice if the if the multiplayer component of this game when it launches just unlocks for you. But I highly doubt, highly highly doubt that it's going to be that way simply based on the fact that this is a standalone multiplayer. And when something is standalone, you are implying that there is no connection, no link to that product, aside from the fact that it's the, it's within the same IP, it's within the Last of Us IP, there's not going to be any link to the single player component, to the single player game, The Last of Us Part Two. I think it should be this way, right? It would, I mean, it would be nice, but play, as we know, PlayStation believes that, you know, everything they make is a, you know, a premium quality product, and honestly, they, they treat it as such, right? So that's how I think it should be if you are if you already purchased or own The Last of Us Part Two. If you did not purchase it, then I think a reasonable price would be between 20 and $30 for the factions uh, standalone multiplayer. Now, understand that even though I'm somebody who doesn't complain about pricing in games, I know that's a big topic, you know, oh, $70 game, $60, whatever, right? I'm somebody who just believes, hey, if you don't think something is worth it, then don't buy it. Just wait for a price drop. I don't see uh, what crying about it or complaining about it does you know vote with your wallet which is just not buying the the product until you feel it is at the uh the appropriate price but even i think it would be kind of egregious if playstation launched this multiplayer um whether or not you uh already own the game you own the original uh campaign the single player component I think it would be egregious if this game was like six, even sixty dollars right this if this standalone was even sixty dollars I'm leaving $70 out of the conversation because I don't think there's any possible way that this standalone multiplayer launches at $70. There, there is no, I will do a backflip out of my window if they launch this stand, standalone multiplayer at $70, right? And I know I've said this st type of stuff before. Oh, I'll do this if they launch this game. No, I will absolutely do a backflip out of my window if PlayStation launches this standalone multiplayer at $70. That's how confident I am that they won't do it. 60? Maybe. Maybe they'll even push it that far. 70? Absolutely not. So, <clears throat> let's move on and talk about what I think it will be. Once again, we know PlayStation they're going to try to get their money. Right? And, you know, they 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 always try to uh, push. They always try to push to see how much people will bend. And, you know, with, uh, you know, their exclusives launching at seventy dollars once again, um, it seems to be working for them. So they have no reason to believe that people won't pay for, you know, their product. They got some loyal fans, not as loyal as Nintendo fans who will buy uh, anything at any price. And that's not a knock at Nintendo fans. I'm just saying they're very loyal. PlayStation fans, not as loyal, but 
they're they're there. Um, so what I think it will be. So as I said previously, they will most likely treat this standalone multiplayer as exactly that. Um, a brand new standalone multiplayer experience that has nothing to do with The Last of Us Part 2, meaning you will pay as such. So I think Factions 2 will be between $30 and $40. I think that's reasonable. I think that's fine. I don't. I, people are going to complain either way, right? People are going to complain and say it should be, it, you know, I shouldn't have to pay this either way. But I think... 30, between 30 and $40, even $49.99, which is once again pushing in a little bit, I think that would be, you know, understandable. Because, you know, once again, there's just no precedence, no, no history with PlayStation that we could go back to to think that PlayStation is just going to be very open, ha open handed uh, philanthropist or uh, magnanimous uh, in regards to a standalone game. We have no reason to think that they're just going to be generous like here. You know, we we appreciate you as a uh, as as our fan base. So we're going to give you something free. They you know, they're like, no, uh, we appreciate y'all, but y'all got to pay for this, though. Um, so if this game was not standalone, if they were like launching it just as a late uh, component to the uh, single player part of the game, then I think this would be absolutely different. But being that they've made it clear, very clear that it is standalone, you're going to have to pay whether whether or, or not you uh, bought the original game. Now, let me move on to what I think the game should absolutely not be. And I know this is going to be extremely controversial for some people, right? Because of the era of gaming that we live in um, is all obsessed with getting things for free that's what everybody is you know this game pass era and this is not a knock at game pass but you know game pass has indoctrinated people to uh feel like everything should be free and their pursuit every day should be how to get the most games you know all, you know or all games for free because some people in some people's mind game pass has devalued each individual game because if they can get if they can pay i don't know how much game pass is a year but if they could pay a hundred dollars a year and get this infinite library then how could one individual game be worth 40 60 70 dollars i get the mentality i don't necessarily agree with it but that's the gaming culture we currently live in because of game pass right so what I'm about to say is very, it's heresy to some people. It's going to be blasphemous. Some people are going to clutch their pearls and hold their children's hands. They're going to be shocked. But The Last of Us Factions 2 multiplayer should not be free to play. That would be a bad idea. And if you look at some examples around the industry, at a lot of these free to play games and you know the issues with them then you will understand why and i'm going to explain some reasons why even if you look at halo infinite which i think is going to be a great and fun multiplayer you can look at some of the uh the information that we've learned prior to its release some of the issues that it has um and some of those are linked to it being free to play some of of that is just due to poor management but free to play so when i say that i don't want the game to be you know free to play i don't want it to have a freemium model uh some people are you know the thing people often ask is why would you want to pay for something if you can get it free and that's not what it's about it's not about wanting to pay for anything i don't want to pay for anything it's about being willing to support a product in a way that it has less of a chance of being compromised by an intrusive uh, price model. That's what it's about. It's about keeping the integrity of the game. Now, there are free-to-play games and games that you, you pay for that can share the same issues. It's not a, you know, it's not the alpha, the omega. It's not a, a one-stop solution, but... Games that are not free to play tend to uh, tend to avoid certain issues, I, I will say. Right. Once again, it's not about wanting to pay for anything. It's, it's just about the, the willingness to protect the product. I don't want to go to work. Right. 
even though I'm, I work remote now, I don't want to work, but I want to make money. I don't want to pay for games, but I want to give the game the best possibility of being good, of being quality, of being up to my standards, right? Let's move on and talk about the other problem with, uh, you know, free to play games, the pay to win model. Now, pay to win is obviously when a player can gain any gameplay advantage over their non-playing pairs. And anybody who played The Last of Us Faction's uh, original multiplayer knows that, honestly, The Last of Us, the, the original one, had some had some free to, uh, had some uh, pay to win elements to it, right? Because there were certain guns and perks that you could not get any other way other than paying for them. And that gave you an advantage over other people who would not pay. So a free to play model with the last of us factions would only exacerbate that would it would only worsen it. So I don't want that because people only look at free to play games as at a surface level. Oh, it's free. Everything's perfect. Then everything's great. That's all that matters. See, when you look at things through that very linear lens, you're not you're not seeing what could possibly happen on the back end. You're not seeing the, the the repercussions for what happens after you enter the game, right? Because it may be free to play, but they often try to screw you on the back end, as I said, with microtransactions and other tactics. Because as I mentioned, Factions 1 already had microtransactions with perks and weapons and, and all that, and it could be worse. When a, You got to understand, right? Here's the next point. When a game is free to play, right, after they establish that they have a good game, right, and they have you hooked, their priority becomes, how can we get your money? Because they already let you in for free, and this is a game, this is a business, they need to make money. Their priority becomes, how can we get money out of your pocket? Which is understandable, right? In, in, by itself, but when their priority is that and not necessarily making the game better, that's that's the issue, and that's where a lot of us, me in particular, that's why I would rather pay a higher upfront cost to avoid the developer in the long run having to worry about how to get money out of my pocket. They're always going to worry about that, but that's not going to be necessarily their biggest focus if it's not a free-to-play game, if they've already made their money up front, right? Because cosmetics, let me just say, I'm not like, I'm not one of those people who believes like all microtransactions are evil and bad and, and spawns of the devil. Like microtransactions are fine as long as they're not egregious. I'm, I'm completely fine if the pricing is okay and, and if cos and if it's cosmetics, it shouldn't be like things that impact gameplay, right? And you got to understand when you look a lot, of, uh, look at a lot of these free to play games, they're just advertisements, right? The, and and they they're in game advertisements, and the advertising becomes too aggressive. When you look at the main screen screen at, at a lot of these free to play games, the whole the whole like sc main screen is a is about trying to get you to buy something else it's just imposing in-game purchases on you it's literally a, an advertisement if you look at it even whether you're playing the game when you're coming out of a match the the, the whole main screen is geared and contrived to get you to push you to persuade you to purchase things i would rather my game that I'm playing not be a big ass advertisement, right? So that's why many of us would rather pay the upfront costs uh, to protect the integrity of the player experience. If we can avoid things like that, hell yeah, I'll pay a one time uh, for 30, 40, even $60 price tag to avoid that. Once again, that's it's not always the case. It's not one size fits all, 100% all the time, but more often than not, Paying up front can uh, can avoid certain issues, right? Even even, and let me just say, DLC packs as microtransactions are better than these indi individualistic microtransactions, right? Because 
they don't do them as all they don't do this as often anymore where some games do where okay it's they'll give you a pack okay here's a perk pack or here's a weapon pack right and the weapon pack is like 599 and you get like i don't know five, five six seven weapons or five six seven perks they would rather sell you uh each weapon each perk at like three dollars because they obviously make a lot more money that way that's why you see games now with less packs because they rather send sell you individual items because that makes them more money once again so the net my next point is people take free to play games less serious than if they paid for it once again that's not an absolute but people tend to take something take care of something if they invested in it if you dropped 50 60 dollars on a game then you are more likely to care about the health of that game and the health of the online community you care about the game progressing the game getting the betterment of the game because you invested in it people who didn't pay for something they just have less a little bit less of an attachment to it and for some people, it's it's just a fledging feeling like, oh, I don't care about this. I don't care about this game. Uh, you know, whatever happens to it, happens to it. I don't care. I didn't, you know. That that's that's how they feel. They don't feel like invested in that community or that, or they don't really care about what happens to it. So, and and that's just my experience from playing several free-to-play games. That's what I see all the time. You could disagree or disagree. Uh, once again, that's not an absolute, but that's that's what tends to happen more oftentimes than not. People who actually pay for something have more of an obligation. Uh, there's more of a desire to actually take care of it. The biggest problem with free-to-play games, right? This is the biggest issue and why I would not want The Last of Us Factions to be, Last of Us Factions 2 to be uh, free-to-play. Cheaters. Now understand, cheaters are more of a problem on PC than they are on console, right? Cheaters are everywhere, but it's clearly more of a problem on, on PC than in console. And as far as we know, The Last of Us Factions 2 is only lost, uh, only launching on PS5. Do I think it could come to PC further down the line? Absolutely. Some people think it's going to launch on PC and PS5 at the, at, you know, simultaneously. Absolutely not. I, I'll do a, once again, I'll do the second backflip out the window if that happens. I don't, I just don't think that's happening at launch because once again, there's no history. There's no precedent of, of them doing such, such, there's no PS5 game on PC yet. Once again, do I think PS5 games uh, are going to come to PC? Yes, but I think, you know, they're still working on getting the P at the wave of PS4 games on PC before they move on to PS5 games. So I don't think The Last of Us Factions is launching on PC. I think they will eventually expand. Yes, if need be. So cheaters are more of a problem on PC than, than console, right? But still there's cheaters on consoles. But you but do you want to guess what the games are with the biggest most egregious cheating problems? Free to play games. All of them are free to play games with the biggest amount of cheaters. And you could, I've done my research, you can look it up yourself so you know I'm not making it up. Regardless of what order that you do your research, that you uh, find in your research, it's always going to be the same games. They may have them listed in different orders, but it's always going to be the same free to play games that have the most cheaters. There are, and, and for, I will say, I'm going I'm to name some games, and, and Fortnite was always number one in my research, right? Fortnite always had. The most and it's it, that makes sense because it has it's the most popular game out of all of these so it's gonna have the most cheaters that's kind of logical Fortnite, Valorant, League of Legends, Call of Duty Warzone, Apex Legends, Team Fortress 2, CS:GO, all riddled with cheaters, and that's because when you have a free to play game. The floodgates are open to everybody, not only the, the great people who are going to contribute to the community and, you know, keep player engagement up and, and keep all those, you know, th those those uh, numbers that developers want to see on their servers. You know, th those high numbers, uh, you know, that healthy player count. It's not only those people that are coming in. 
It's the fucking fucktards, okay? It, it's the shitheads. It's the... <laughs> It's it's literally the the cheaters, the unwanted, the undesirables, and the degenerates, the scumbags. Okay, you're letting all of them in too. And here's the thing, right? You could have, let's say it's only five percent of people that are cheating in in a game. The five percent of people that are cheating could absolutely ruin the experience. For the rest of the rest of the 95% of people who are playing legit, they could literally destroy the game because most people do play legit. Absolutely. Most people play legit. The majority of people aren't cheating, but you still feel the impact of the cheating through, throughout the community. They ruin it for everybody else. And that's what happens when you when you let the floodgates open to everybody. Now. There's going to be cheaters regardless, once again, even if people paid for it, even if it's not a freemium bottle, but you're going to get a lot less of them. I, I'm, in, I'm inclined to believe that if somebody, if somebody paid $40, $60, eh, maybe I don't want to cheat and ruin this community since I had to pay money for this game. And a free-to-play game, they're like, uh, who cares? If I get banned, whatever. So... You got to understand, like, you ha that's why you have to look past the whole, oh, it's free. That's all that matters. No, you have to look deeper than that. You have to look behind the curtain of, of a game just being free. Because, once again, in today's era, in to today's gaming culture, that's like all people see. It's free. They don't think about anything past that. Judging a game solely based on its price Solely based on if you can get it free or not is highly is is a highly flawed way of viewing it. If especially if it could affect your player experience going forward, it's it's literally free to play games are like walking. It's like walking into a free amusement park, but all the rides are booby trapped and all the games are scams. So you're like, oh, you're happy go lucky. You're skipping into the park. You're doing backflips into the park. Like, yay, I got in free. Okay, well, there's TNT strapped to the to the roller coaster, and you know the uh, the the uh, I don't know that throwing game is is laced with acid. Okay, and if you miss, acid is gonna fall on your face and completely melt you, melt your whole body, and you're dead. Like, yes, I'm being. <laughs> you you get the point. That that's what it's like. You're gonna get screwed over. In the long run. So is that what you really want? Is getting a game for free rather than paying $60 one time really worth it? Is is that is it really, really that bad? Once again, I just care about keeping the integrity of the product. Right? I'm not saying I want to pay for anything. Once again, I am willing to do what's best for the product. And for the products I care, for the products I want to enjoy, I'm willing to do that. It's not about want. Sometimes what you want isn't always the best thing. So let me know what y'all think. Um, <clears throat> let me know if, you know, uh, what, what do you think it should be? What do you think it will be? Uh, you know, do you want it to be free to play? Let me know what would be your ideal situation. Uh, and uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I upload a video. Um, follow me on Twitter and hit the join button if you want to support the channel. All right. So uh, thank you all for watching. Interested to hear y'all thoughts and I will catch y'all on the next video. All right. I'm out of here. Peace.